Welcome to Narrow Ground Entertainment. I am Steve the Unimpressed, and this is Steve Solo's Seven Days to Die Alpha 19. Uh, if you remember the end of the last episode, I had a little mishap with my desert base. I was not uh, as aware as I should have been about how Flagstone needs to be supported, and I'm still not entirely sure what I had screwed up, but I do know that when I rebuild this, if I do, I probably will be building it much more akin to how I've done my other mines, which is just wood over the top, because it doesn't need to be that secure. Zombies will jump down, and I will kill them, and we'll move on. That's not a thing that I'm going to worry about right now, though, because this is a Horde Night episode. The, the day number has not changed to reflect that just yet, but give it a couple hours and it will do so. So I'm going to... Uh, take what I have collected of my yeah, leftovers after my accident, uh, consolidate them into my or between my motorcycle and inventory and my own inventory, and head back to my main base to prepare. I do want to modify some of my... Well, I guess not modify. I want to add something to my fortifications before this night starts. I also apparently need to drink some coffee. Because what else would you drink? Well, I've made it back to base. The Horde Knight, or the, the day number has updated to the red Horde Knight color. There's an airdrop that fell over there, which I will probably forget to go get. But there are a few things that I'm going to take care of here. Got a few chores to do. In the last episode, I got a much better hunting rifle than what I'd been working with. What I had before only had one slot for a modifier, so I was, of course, using a scope on it. Now I have one with four modifier slots, so I'm going to add some more mod mods. I'm going to add a bipod, a muzzle brake, and the rad remover, which m probably this is not the optimum weapon to move to put a rad m rad remover mod on. Probably would be better on my marksman rifle or my tactical assault rifle. But I do have another one, and every mod that you add to a weapon gives that weapon some kind of bonus. So even if you're not using the the ideal mod for that weapon, it it improves it. I'm not sure that a sniper rifle, well, the hunting rifle, is really the best weapon to put a bipod mod on, or even a muzzle brake. I think the muzzle brake is a little more appropriate because the sniper rifle does have pretty high recoil. Bipod would probably be better on my tactical assault rifle, but I've got space for it on here, and I think I've got another bipod mod for my assault rifle anyway. So, we'll uh, put it on here and call it good. Let's complete that, and now it does even more damage than it did before. Now, let me see. The other thing I need to do is start my chemistry station cooking some of that oil shale that I dug up into gas and before I do that I'm going to come and use the one skill point that I have on the next level of the grease monkey perk now I shouldn't my my intellect is modified to an eight I've only actually got it to a seven so I'm not entirely sure this will work can I even purchase this yes interesting okay what happens if I take the nerdy glasses off? Do I lose access to it then? Yes. That's interesting. Okay. Disabled by status effect. So, not having the nerdy glasses on is now a status effect. But, actually, I can now craft a 4x4 truck as long as I leave my glasses on. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure that makes sense. Makes a certain amount of sense. I definitely couldn't actually work on a vehicle without glasses because my eyes are very bad. I suppose I could put contacts in, though. Anyway, moving on. At some point, I will buy... Probably as soon as I get two more skill points, I will buy the next level of the intellect, intellect attribute, and uh, then this won't be a problem. However, for now... I'll just use it the way it is. Let's put the glasses back on. That fourth level of the Grease Monkey perk also gives us access to the stack of gas cans recipe, 
which I actually don't have enough oil shale for, unfortunately, so I will not be able to do that. Since I still need to produce some fuel, I will just use the regular recipe. Let's see here. I do have the... Yeah, that's unlocked now. But for now, I'll just use the regular recipe, and maybe I won't use all of the oil shale that I have. Let's do... Let's say 200. That will give me 2,000 more gas because it crafts in units of 10. So every oil shale should convert to 10 units of gasoline. Won't need quite that much fuel in there. Let me see, what do I need? Three minutes? So yeah, let's, uh, let's put a little bit less than... Let's not put enough fuel in there to run it for 20 minutes when we only need to run it for three. There. Shortly, I'll have more gas, and I've fallen down the mine. While I was away, the forge was running, cooking up forged steel, so I'm starting to accumulate quite a bit of that. I'm actually going to need to go and mine iron if I want to have enough to make the forged steel I need for the truck. So I will have to take care of that in the, in the upcoming week's worth of gameplay. Either that, or I will have to buy some more from the trader, and I may well be able to do that. I came back from the desert with a load of stuff to sell to the trader. Some of this was here before that, but I think everything from this iron shovel on is new, and all of it is worth a fair amount. Some of it I will be able to add modifiers to to make it worth even more. I think both helmets, I have some mods that are lying around that I don't want, so I'll add those to them and increase the price. I'll probably run over to Trader Hugh with some of this stuff shortly here and sell it off. And then I will get myself down to the pillars and there's, there, if I have the time there's a new fortification type that I want to build there and see if I can try out. Because it's one that I have not tried before and I want to see whether it works for me. Trader Hugh was willing to buy pretty much all of my leftover stuff, so I've sold it all to him. And I am going to collect my stuff to go down to the Pillars of Safety now, which will be basically all of my weapons and ammo. Maybe not all of the shotgun ammo. Leave some of that behind. Never going to get through all of it. And I will leave some of my regular tools here. I'm probably not going to need my axe. Don't think I'll need my shovel or the auger. Might need the machete. Don't need the impact driver. I think the rest will bring along. The other thing I'm going to remember to bring with me today is the robotic sledge, because that is the item required for the new fortification style I want to try. How well it will work out is anybody's guess. I think I'll bring the compound crossbow and some crossbow bolts with me as well, because I've got a lot of them lying around. We are pushing the time when the zombies are going to start showing up, though. So I need to, if I want to try this out today, I need to get myself down there and get to work. So much so that I'm not even going to use the ramp. Here are the pillars. Apparently you have to be in the area, and the pillars have to be loaded in, or whatever is drying has to be loaded in for this concrete to dry, because it has not dried. Which is interesting, but I guess I know that now. Let's start setting up this thing that I want to try, though. And put. I'm not. I'm not going to build a very good representation of this, but it'll hopefully be serviceable, at least for the night. I want to try to use more flagstone than not. Well, the idea for this came from a channel called Not A Gamer Gaming, and I'm going to execute it rather poorly. But it was a base design that used the robotic sledgehammer, which I have with me, because I never threw the one that I got away, to knock zombies off the fortifications that you'd prepared before they got to you. And I'm going to try and do a little of that here. Losing track of what I'm doing because I'm bad at talking and building at the same time. That's why I don't build very much on camera. 
I will link that video in the, hopefully in the cards here and also in the description. Now the idea, as I understand it, is to have a robotic sledgehammer off to the side of a path that the zombies will follow towards you because it seems like they can get to you, or in the, really they can get to you. And somewhere along that path, the uh, robotic sledgehammer will knock them off. I'm going to build that here out of wood. Put the robotic sledgehammer down there. And I really did not leave as much room as is required to do this design well. So it's, this may or may not go very well, but as I mentioned in a previous episode, I, I like to build new fortification ideas next to my old fortifications so that if things go badly, I can just resort to Old Faithful. Let me get one more wood frame block. Well, let's make a couple more. And put that there. And one more here. There. Now hopefully zombies will climb up this staircase towards me and start jumping over these, getting knocked off by the sledgehammer occasionally, hopefully, and uh, not actually get close to me, except for a few which I will shoot. This isn't going to go well, is it? Well, that's why these are not full wood frames. When this goes poorly, which it inevitably will, I'll just pick those up and then I'll be safe again. You know, safe-ish. It's not time yet, Vulture. Vultures. What are you guys doing here? Still got ten minutes. Meh. The Vultures don't think I'm going to make it tonight. They're already circling. Alright, here we go. Let's see if this works. And now the vultures actually attack. Well, at least the sledgehammer thing appears to be working well. Okay, less well. Did I remember any health kits? Yes, I did. Park. Well. Okay, this is gonna go poorly. Time to move. Wake up and move, thank you. All right, we're gonna try to run back over there and not get killed on the way. Chance of success, poor. But, you know, what else are you going to do when you died on Horde Night? I'll save my running until I actually hear some coming after me. What's funny is I think that actually would have worked relatively well if not for the vultures. It's Horde Night. Why am I not getting swarmed? I'm just, you know, strolling down a country road. Not a zombie in sight. I'm less than a hundred meters from the towers. It's still no zombies. Maybe they want to give me a sporting chance? Interesting. Now there are no zombies spawning. Are 
Are you only allowed to die once on Horde Nights now? I'm confused. I'm gonna try relogging. Let's go back over here, pick these up. There we go. Now the zombies are coming back. Let's see. Okay, right now they're beating on the pillars, so let's put this up so they can find their way toward me. You know, maybe. Anybody? There we go. Okay, let's pick those up and deal with this cop for a moment. Ouch. Where are you? Oh. More of you. Didn't you do enough damage last time? I appear to be broken. Well, that helped some of it, but not all of it. Alright, I better put those back in, otherwise I'm just going to be getting shot at constantly with no, no results. I think that my turret might be broken, either from being used too much or from me shooting it. So I think that test is over, and I'm actually probably going to lose that turret, aren't I? It's okay, I'll buy another one. That actually worked quite well, but I need to pay more attention to the vultures, and the cops are behaving like artillery here. I kept getting hit by them, and I never actually saw the cops that were doing it. Let's see if I can get these guys to come over toward the regular pillars and beat on those instead of beating on the, the ones holding the turrets up. Let's get a repair kit on that. And go back to the old method. Still, it's already 3 a.m., so I don't have that much left of the night. That got me through a good portion of the night without any damage to the pillars whatsoever. Same cannot be said of right now. Hey, there's the morning sound. So now they should stop spawning and I should just have to take care of whoever's left. Yeah, I hear you. You're still here and you're still mad. There. 
took care of it for you. Well, that went well, I thought. Other than, you know, the part where I died and had to re-log to get more zombies. But I'm blaming the vultures for that. That wasn't anything to do with this, really. Let's go around and collect some loot. Oh, right. My leg is broken, too. Okay, let's limp around and collect some loot. Well, I think the verdict on this, uh, this fortification design is good idea, bad execution. Probably shouldn't build it out of wood and flagstone if I intend to use it repeatedly, and probably should set things up in such a way that I'm not shooting my own turret, because I'm pretty sure that's what happened to this thing. Could have just worn out, but either way, it's at zero durability. However, I did find in the loot I was just collecting a level 4 one. Let's see, is it uh, any better, really? Yes, it does more melee damage. Uh, how about attacks per minute? Veteran attacks per minute, so it will be able to knock off more zombies. I don't have any of the robotics-related perks, and using robots in some sort of defense like this, uh, that would probably be beneficial. So we'll have to consider as time goes on whether we're going to do that in this playthrough. I'm already leveling up intellect to be able to build the truck, so it might not be that far out of my way to get that. We'll be getting a late start in the next episode because we've spent so much time looking at and surveying the damage in this episode, but that's okay. Mostly what I'll need to do in the next episode, since the traders have restocked, is go around and check the other two traders that I know now know about to see if they have anything I need to buy. I also will need to get back to base and get some uh, infection medicine and a splint, because man, I got banged up in this in this horde night. I got bang I got more banged up than the fortifications, I think. If you want to see a much better version of this fortification design, check out Not a Gamer Gaming's video about it. I will link that in the description. Let me know how things have been going in your 7 Days to Die playthrough if you have one in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and maybe subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. Goodbye and God bless.